Good morning, and thank you for joining us. With me today is Senior Advisor for the COVID Response, Lindsay Malden, who will provide an update on the vaccination effort in Pennsylvania. I am here to reaffirm the Department's commitment to ensure that Pennsylvanians will have access to second doses of COVID-19 vaccinations within the CDC recommended time frame of up to 42 days after the first dose. I'm very pleased to report that members of the COVID-19 vaccine joint legislative task force are in agreement with our communication today. To date, this task force has held three meetings where we discussed concerns and shared our collective commitment to boosting Pennsylvania's vaccine rollout. In the spirit of collective commitment, the department and task force have agreed on a plan to remedy the situation Pennsylvania is facing this week. As the Department of Health works to improve the complex processes necessary to get the COVID-19 vaccine from the manufacturers into the arms of Pennsylvanians as quickly as possible, we discovered some providers inadvertently used the Moderna vaccine shipped to them intended as second doses as first doses. It seems that the perfect storm of circumstances, an eagerness to get vaccine to residents, incredible pent-up desire by the public to get this vaccine, dedicated vaccine providers trying to deliver what their customers are demanding, inconsistent vaccine allocations, confusion about Operation Warp Speed vaccine deliveries, and the need for more frequent and clear communication from the department, all converged to bring us to the point which we are in today. In the short term, we are faced with second dose Moderna vaccine requests far exceeding the Moderna vaccine allocated to the state this week. Allow me to be abundantly clear. The Pfizer vaccine is not affected. After careful review and discussion with legislators on Governor Wolf's COVID-19 vaccine joint task force, we have a clear path forward. And again, we are committed to ensuring that second doses are available. For that path forward, first, we explored excess inventory, not scheduled for administration this week, and to the extent we were able to, used it to help address this issue. Second, one of the remedies includes adjusting the timing of the Moderna second dose administration. All providers will be following CDC guidelines that set the minimum time between doses at 28 days and the maximum time at 42 days. By extending the time between doses while remaining within CDC guidelines, we can minimize any disruption to first dose vaccinations. Our goal remains getting the extremely limited supply of vaccine to people as quickly and as efficiently as possible. The department is working directly with vaccine providers throughout this process. And in line with the vaccine order that the governor and I signed last week, we'll soon be able to provide more precise information on vaccine allocations each week to increase transparency and predictability with first doses. This situation is a stark reminder that right now there is not enough vaccine for everyone who is eligible to get it. We know that there will be more vaccine in the future 
and we're working to get as much vaccine as we can into the arms of Pennsylvanians. And we will find ways to enhance that process. In the meantime, we must mask up, wash up, and social distance to save lives. Now, I'll turn things over to Lindsay Malden to provide an update on vaccination numbers this week and more details about the Your Turn tool. Lindsay? Good morning, everyone, and thank you, Secretary Beam. Here's today's update on the vaccination effort in Pennsylvania. Every day, tens of thousands of Pennsylvanians are receiving the COVID-19 vaccine. Through February 16th, 1,749,949 doses have been administered by local vaccine providers. That's 82% of first doses being administered, 38% of second doses being administered. That means that nearly 1.5 million Pennsylvanians have received their first dose, and nearly half a million people have received both doses and are now fully vaccinated. We know that the actual number of people vaccinated is higher, and as Secretary Beam said, we're continuing to work with providers to make sure reporting is kept up to date. This week, Pennsylvania has been allocated 183,575 first doses of vaccine and 143,275 second doses of vaccine. In addition, the federal government is sending thousands of doses of vaccine directly to Rite Aid and Topco stores in Pennsylvania under the Federal Retail Pharmacy Partnership Program. And remember, the Philadelphia Department of Public Health receives its own separate allocation of vaccine. So in total, that makes 326,850 total doses coming into Pennsylvania vaccine providers this week. That is an increase of more than 8,000 doses from last week. We know that getting vaccinated is such an important step in the effort to stop COVID-19. And we know that people may be struggling to get a vaccine appointment. Right now, there simply is not enough vaccine available to meet the incredible demand. Pennsylvania is not unique in this regard. There will be more vaccine available in the future, and Pennsylvania has a large network of trusted local vaccine providers ready to deliver it when that day comes. Meanwhile, last week, we launched the Your Turn tool to help everyone understand where they fall in the vaccination prioritization effort. Already, 136,000 people have signed up through Your Turn. In addition, to, in addition to finding out when it is your turn to get a vaccine, the Your Turn tool allows people to register to receive updates about vaccine distribution and allows the department to let you know when it is your turn to get vaccinated. We are also looking to add more functionality to this important resource in the near future. Your Turn does not schedule people for a vaccine appointment, but it allows for individuals to submit their email address to receive future updates related to vaccine opportunities when there is more vaccine available. If it is your turn, you will be directed on how to find a vaccine provider. If someone does not have internet access to use the Your Turn tool, they can call 877-PA-HEALTH to speak with a representative to determine eligibility. If eligible, the representative will help the individual find a vaccine provider near them and provide contact information to make an appointment. While much of the focus across the country is on the vaccination effort, it is important to remember that testing for COVID-19 is still widely available in Pennsylvania. In fact, our COVID-19 testing provider continues to offer regional testing in five counties each week. This week, the free testing sites will be located in Berks, Indiana, Lackawanna, Lawrence, and Lebanon counties through today. Next week, there will be five more counties that will be announced later this week. Additional information on these free clinics is available on the department's website at health.pa.gov. To date, over 11 million test results have been received in Pennsylvania. And since initiating the Connect and Protect form for case investigation and contact tracing, there continues to be an increase in the number of calls to complete contact tracing on positive cases of COVID-19. I would also like to remind everyone that if you receive a call regarding
keep up our stop of COVID-19 by masking up, washing up, and maintaining social distancing. Thank you. I'll now turn the microphone back to Secretary Beam and we'll take questions. Our first question today is from Deanna Duranti from NBC 10. Deanna, you can go ahead and unmute. Secretary Beam, people watching this are now going to be confused and perhaps in a panic hearing that second doses were given out as first doses. What do you say to them? How many doses are we talking about? What providers? And when you say it's going to minimally impact first doses, what do you mean? And how do you decide now who doesn't get that first dose while this is getting straightened out? So we have had abundant communication, not just at the legislative task force level, but also with the provider community to reinforce that every action we are taking is to provide security in the second doses in Pennsylvania. That has been a tenet of our rollout that we have really held fast to, and this really is indicative of our dedication to that second dose security. The provider communications have been clear as of yesterday afternoon. They will also become more frequent as of today through the end of the week so that providers have that ability to communicate with us as they learn through today into tomorrow what their allocations will be and the impact to them. But if there was one message to be able to provide to individuals, it really is that this is all in an effort of second dose security. But that didn't answer any of the questions I just asked you. How many doses, what providers, what is the effect on people? That's, that's what I asked. So I still have a follow-up question once I get those answers. Are we talking large pharmacy chains? Are we talking one pharmacy? Are we talking 10 pharmacies? So the amount of doses requested was roughly 200,000 second doses of Moderna. That, as you know from our numbers and our updates that Lindsay provides as well, that's roughly our entire Moderna allocation for the week. And so we had to be able to adjust. And again, we were able to partner with our federal ph pharmacy partners and our federal retail partners to identify any inventory that we could use in the immediate to help address this. We also allowed this a second dose to be communicated to partners that they could avail themselves of CDC's permission to go to the 42nd day, which is a rescheduling of a second dose appointment to the fifth or to the sixth week. And all of that was done in an effort to minimize any disruption to those first doses, which will have a reduction for the following week. Providers will be finding out their allocations throughout the day today through clear communications, and we are also holding frequent provider communications for them to be able to engage with us directly with any questions they may have. So you're saying that all 200,000 second doses were given out as first doses? See, that's, that's what I'm trying to understand here. I'm trying to get a, a, a concrete number as to how many doses and where this happened. Sure. So this was an issue, a structural issue, that actually started in the beginning of January. And there was inadvertent use of Moderna second doses, and it was an issue that compounded week over week. This is the week where we've addressed it because it has become so significant that, again, the amount of requested second doses of Moderna was almost equal to our entire allocation of Moderna. And so it was a week over week structural problem. We are working to address it this week. Over the next two to three weeks, we will have corrected for it. And also by increasing our provider communications, we will hopefully be able to be better aligned with our provider community and allow this to be prevented from happening any further. Okay, thank you. Our next question is going to be from Chris Mamula from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Chris, you should be able to unmute. Good morning, Secretary. Thank morning. you for being available today. Yeah. Um, so it, it sounds like, uh, just to follow up on the last uh, question, it sounds as though that there was a request for 200,000 uh, second doses by some number of providers, and that's entirely like the whole order, so you had to be able to do something. Is that, is that correct? 
Chris, you nailed it. That's exactly the issue that arose. And we worked very swiftly to be able to not only brief the legislative task force, but worked to identify the paths forward. But you articulated the issue perfectly. Thank you. Uh, just a, one quick follow-up question. The uh, winnowing, the uh, narrowing down, or the uh, reduction in the number of providers that we talked about last week, uh, is that starting this week? I mean, has that started already? Are, can, are you able to provide any numbers for how that's going to go? How many fewer providers this week over last week, that kind of thing? Sure. So we are, as indicated last week, we are continuing to make sure that we concentrate the vaccine within the providers that are really able to handle volume and speed. And in doing so, we will, and again, I want to be clear here, this is first doses. And so our first doses will progressively be going to a smaller provider network. Second doses will remain secure. Providers will receive the second doses that they have administered the corresponding first dose for. Our Thank next, you, Secretary. Thank you. Our next question is going to be from Taylor Tasha from ABC 27. Taylor, you should be able to unmute. Thank you. Um, so I have two questions. So does this impact people who already had a scheduled second Moderna vaccine? And then um, my other question also, since primary care physicians aren't um, going to be a provider anymore, will that also affect those who already had an appointment scheduled with their primary care physician? So first, for the second dose scheduling, it will simply be a rescheduling to the following week or the week after. So the 42-day window that the CDC has now advised is permissible for there to be the vaccine administered within is what providers will be able to use to make sure that we will be able to give them second doses within that 42-day window and patients will be able to secure their second shot within that 42-day window. So that will be a rescheduling a week or at most two weeks out from the current. We know People need to be able to know that they're going to get their second dose shots and they should get them from their same provider. And we want to reiterate that as well. I think for first doses within the primary care physician's offices, you'll be seeing that tapering that we discussed previously. But ultimately, please know the second doses will still go to the provider from which you received your first dose. Thank you. Up next, we have Jackie Detour from Fox 43. Jackie, you should be able to unmute. Um, we've been hearing that places like Lancaster General Hospital have not received any vaccine doses for the past two weeks. That's totaling around 10,000 doses for providers like that. They're saying it's because of weather, but could it also have to do with this vaccine second dose issue that now some providers are not getting vaccines at all if they're waiting to get the second dose or if you're taking away some of the first doses to go to second doses? So I would be happy to have our press team follow up on the specific case of Lancaster General. Overarchingly, what we're talking about today really is starting today to be rolled out for next week's allocation. And so I just want to make sure the timing is clear as well, that we, are, we have identified the issue, we have identified the path forward within the past few days, and we are making now the public announcement of exactly how we're proceeding forward, but this is for next week's allocations. So the places that have been getting, like, for instance, any other hospital, Lancaster General Health is just the example here, any other places that are getting fewer vaccines over the past two weeks, does that seem to be from the Department of Health related to weather issues, or is it something else? We know that weather issues have come up. The Pennsylvania weather this past few weeks, and I think into tomorrow, are definitely something that concern us, um, but we've also for the specific causation of any hospital right now, I would suggest that our press team follow up with you to allow there to be certainty for any um, causation of weather issues there. Thank you. Up next, we have Ford Turner for Morning Call. Ford, you should be able to unmute. Hi, Acting Secretary Bean. Morning. Uh, I'm wondering if this 
issue with the second shots of the Moderna vaccine is a symptom perhaps of the lack of a centralized system to book uh, vaccine appointments. And I do have a follow-up question. Can you comment on that? So when we were really understanding the issue that we're grappling with today, ultimately, it's a scarcity of commodity. We still do not have enough vaccine to go around. And so we don't want to have that get lost in the messaging today, that we still need more vaccine. Communications will also be enhanced throughout our path forward to allow us to prevent this from moving forward. At this stage, a centralized registry has not been identified as something that would help remedy the circumstance that we're dealing with right now. But I think by way of centralized registry update, Lindsay, if you want to provide an update on the Your Turn tool any further than we have now. Okay. So I, the underlying um, question being, does a centralized registry really address today's issue? At this stage of the game, that wouldn't be something that would help remedy what we're dealing with today. Do you have a follow-up question? Okay, after Ford, we have Stephanie Stahl from CBS3. And Stephanie, you should be able to unmute. Can you hear me? Yep. Uh, my question is, what provider made this mistake? How many people are impacted and what mechanisms are there in place weren't in place that stopped this. So who made this mistake and how? So another part of our understanding of this issue um, is that we are not here to have blame placed anywhere. In fact, we want to make sure that instead all of us are focusing on the path forward and the fix directionally moving Pennsylvania forward as well. To your question about the magnitude of folks impacted, for second appointments that would likely need rescheduled out one or two weeks max, there are roughly 30 to 60,000 appointments that could need to be rescheduled one or two weeks out. For first appointments, there could be 30 to 55,000 first doses that providers had expected and anticipated that would not actually be delivered this week. But as you also know, we've worked very closely with our providers to understand that in a time where our allocations have fluctuated and we've had inconsistency with our own counterparts, we want to make sure that they also are scheduling those first doses once they've received their allocation from us. And so that number could actually be reduced if the providers have not yet scheduled those appointments. So we could be talking over 100,000 people. Who is going to be getting in touch with them, communicating with them, and does the state have any mechanism in place to monitor this and make sure it doesn't happen again? So we are working very closely with our provider partners to understand the rescheduling process that the providers will go through for those second doses to make sure that folks are rescheduled for their second dose appointment at their same provider. The first, dose, the first dose appointments that might have to be rescheduled, we again expect to work very closely with our provider partners to communicate this. The controls that we've put in place not only are with reference to clearer communication, but also allowing us to all sync on the same calendar, making sure that we're all ordering aligned with Operation Warp Speed's policies, the state's policies, and then each of the provider policies. And so what we're doing now is really right tracking us. And again, it will take likely this week, next week, and the following week to be able to put us on a more stable ground. But we are doing this all in an effort for a more transparent and predictable stable state. And speaking of transparency, I know you don't want to have a blame game here, uh, but you have potentially over 100,000 people who have vaccines now changing or in jeopardy. Isn't it incumbent on the health department to tell people what providers have, will, they'll be getting in touch with? 
We're not talking about blame here. You said that there was going to be transparency and accountability. Why not name the providers that are involved with this issue? So, as I mentioned in our remarks, this is a structural issue that really emerged in the beginning of January and was compounded throughout the following weeks. We know because we are in the trenches with our provider community as well as our federal counterparts that this is an unprecedented rollout. This initiative is of such magnitude that there is always an opportunity to do better. And so what we are working on is making sure that our communication, our transparency, our end of the bargain is improved upon and we put the controls in place to not have this happen again by working more closely with our federal partners and more closely with our provider partners. Thank you. And our last question today is going to be from Flora Pastorero from penwatch.org. Flora, you should be able to unmute. Hi, Secretary. Hi. I think we're all a little bit confused, so help me understand this. You're saying that 200,000 second doses went out to Pennsylvanians as the first dose. Is that correct? So this week, we had orders for up to 200,000 second doses of Moderna. And so this is a compounding problem that started in the beginning of January when either second doses were inadvertently used as first doses or inventory was pushed out that wasn't in accordance with the Operation Warp Speed calendar. And because of those factors, week over week, when this week's order came in, it was close to 200,000 second doses of Moderna that were requested, which as we've discussed, is very close to our entire allocation of first and second doses of Moderna. So from the patient's standpoint, if they're receiving the second dose first instead of the first dose, what is the health implication for them? And do they have to start this process all over? No. So there, for patients that had inadvertently received a second dose as a first dose, they actually, um, their experience likely would not even be something that's visible to them in understanding that it was a second dose that was used as a first dose. And so they should not start their vaccination process over again. Rather, they should secure their second dose. There is no difference in the medicine in the first and second doses. And so they started their regimen with a first dose. They should fulfill the vaccine by having that second dose administered by the same provider that they went to for the first dose. That concludes our press conference today. Thank you again for joining.